Infinity has a new car for 2015. Lamborghini says no manual for the next Gallardo. Ford puts a little more haul into their Super Duty. And the Nissan Delta Wing has a dramatic crash at Road Atlanta Plus. Commenter of the week, it's a packed show today. What's up, everybody? I'm Derek D. This right here is Fast Lane Daily. And how about them Giants, AK? How about the Giants and the Giants? That's right. Big game yesterday. And San Francisco, too. Oh, yes, right. You got to learn how to win. Take each step to become a champion. I apologize about my voice. Not 100%. Watching football all day, okay? You know how it goes. All right. Infinity has wanted to make a new entry-level sedan for a while now, and it looked like design and build duties would be turned over to manufacturer Magna Steyr. Well, now the Japanese luxury counterpart to Nissan wants to build the new model in-house in Europe and has set a production date for 2015. Is that right, Max? That is right. Yes. Styling should take hints from the Etheria concept, hopefully not too many hints. So, I mean, I think it's kind of just weird looking. It doesn't do it for me. Power could come from a range of four and six cylinder engines provided by Mercedes. Cool. We got some news on the next generation, and I mean next generation, not refresh, of the Lamborghini Gallardo. First off, it's going to get a new name altogether and will borrow technology seen in the Sesto Elemento concept. Some things it will do without is hybrid technology and a manual gearbox. Now, I'm not arguing with the naturally aspirated engine, but no manual, eh, that seems a little harsh, but I get it. However, the Lambo bigwigs have suggested that a rear wheel drive version is still possible. Let's be honest though, people, whatever Lambo does decide to do with the next Gallardo, or whatever it's gonna be, I'll still want one. You know what I'm saying, AK? <clears throat> and Ford decided to give its biggest and baddest trucks an upgrade for 2013. Now the 2013 F-Series Super Duty has a maximum towing capacity of 18,500 pounds, more than any rival, and its maximum payload has gained 100 pounds to 7,260. Now that's built Ford tough. Am I right, AK? Oh yeah, fine business. I feel like you gotta talk like this. Those numbers put rivals like the Chevy Silverado 3500 HD and the GMC Sierra 3500 to shame. Another upgrade came from Ford Super Duty's... All right, I'm gonna stop. Another upgrade came to Ford Super Duty's brakes to provide better heat dissipation. I guess that means if you were ever locked into a space, you could maybe just tow the car in your way, out of the way, or just push it, you know, without a second thought. Or just do a ton of man work like the show in the commercials. Go forward. Built Ford Tough. I'm going to throw dirt in the, in the back. I'm going to throw a bunch of hammers in there. All right. This year's 10 hours of Petit Le Mans endurance race at Road Atlanta had a share of excitement, especially this crash, where a Porsche GT3 cup car slams into the side of Nissan's Delta Wing, causing it to flip and shoot along the track upside down. Fortunately, didn't injure the driver. Looking at the video, it seems the Porsche lost control when it applied power to the rear left wheel that was still on the curb, which cut the Porsche into the Delta Wing. Luckily for Nissan, they were able to fix their racer up quickly and put it into the final race of ALMS this season. So. That's good, no one was hurt. All right, you guys know what time it is. Yeah. What time is it? Commenter of the week time. That is so correct for you to say, Max. Commenter of the week. Comments our show. Yeah, commenter of the week. Comments! Thank you. Very well done. This comment comes from a YouTube dude named Weston M. Weston M. Sounds like he should be driving a Ford Super Duty truck. Anyway, he said this, WTF Porsche, you offer a manual in the normal non-Purus 911, but not the real deal racer? Even though my minimum wage ass can't afford one, it still pissed me off. I think this officially seals the deal on manual transmissions. Guess we better get used to flappy paddles from now on. Cue the FLD sad noise. <laughs> well, Weston M, we understand your disappointment in Porsche, but you know, it's not all that bad, and a lot of companies are doing it. If you think about it, it's all done for a reason. The car can shift faster than a human because the computers technically could shift faster than your foot can go on the clutch and you could shift. 
You have the choice between automatic if you want it or shifting yourself with the paddles. You can keep both hands on the wheel at all times and you still get the feeling of driving an extremely badass Porsche, okay? But on the other hand, manual shifting is just a lot of fun. Plain and simple, right AK? Yes. It is. And honestly, I don't think they're ever gonna officially really just get rid of manual. It'll always be there somewhere. Maybe not in the, you know, crazy high-end supercars, but you'll still be able to get manual. Don't worry. Anyway, that'll do it for Fast Lane Daily today. I'm Derek D. We're on Twitter. Follow us. We're on Facebook. Like us. We're on YouTube. Subscribe to us. We're on iTunes. You can watch us there. Instagram. Fast Lane Daily is our username. And you can wear a t-shirt if you'd like. All right. And that's it. <clears throat> Remember, brush your teeth. No one likes stank-ass breath. Have a good show today, Derek D. Thanks, AK. What's up, everybody? I'm Derek D. And this is Vaseline Daily. Part of my voice, by the way. All right. <laughs> All right, now, okay. <laughs> Causing it to flip along the track and dirt upside down. Unfortunately, without injuring the driver. Unfor what am I saying? <laughs> Man, I do it all day long. <laughs> always remember to use a belt. Because if you don't, your pants are gonna fall down. And a lot of people out there walking the streets, busting a sag too much. Ow, we're living in the fast lane, baby.